Alrighty, Spirothon. I'm very excited for this run, and it's my pleasure to announce the legendary Deo Man to come do a invisible scenery showcase for y'all. So take it away, Deo Man, including Piper. Hello, guys. What's up? It's me, Deo. You guys know me. Thank you for the beautiful introduction, Brando. And I'm joined here by Piper1618. Did I get those numbers right, Piper? You did get them correct. Well, welcome, welcome. What do you say we get uh, right on into this run? And can we just bask in the glory together of the invisible intro here? I mean, this is just... What do you have to say about this, Piper? This is just something else. It is... Um... Yeah, there's just uh, there's a Nork and not much else. Yeah, I, I skipped the part where a spiral flies through him, but yeah, there's basically this run that you guys are about to see here. Run, I use a, a very loosely. This is going to be kind of an exhibition sort of casual jaunt through Spiral Run, Spiral One, where we're missing all of the uh, terrain, specifically uh, three Game Shark codes that remove basically all of the scenery with the exception of a few things, but. Um, We'll explain a little bit more as we get into it. I'll give it a quick countdown. I don't know if there's a time. Yeah, there's a timer right below me there. I'll give you guys a countdown. Count it down with me, guys, in the chat. Three, two, one, go. Let's do it. Woo! Go Spirothon. So yeah, uh, this is the Spyro Invisible Terrain Showcase. Um, and Piper was the one to originally uh, kind of come up with these Game Shark codes. As you can see, we are missing all of the ground and all that you can see behind the dragons and actors is uh, the skybox. And so <laughs> you'll be able to see some kind of funny things through the ground that I'll be pointing out throughout this run. But uh, Piper, do you want to talk a little bit about how this sort of challenge came to be? Yeah, so... Some things uh, get de get developed uh, deliberately. Some things just get stumbled upon. Um, I've been working on like doing some hacking for this game for a couple of years now, uh, and just kind of trying to figure out you know details about how the game works. Uh, while I'm doing that, uh, I spend a lot of time just poking various memory addresses in the game, seeing what happens uh, when I. Uh, when I change various things, sometimes the results are fun, sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're boring. And uh, often I don't have uh, any idea what's going to happen. Thank you for releasing Yeah, so, so you've done um, the invisible terrain. What other sort of kind of challenge things have you come up with? Or just fun, like little hacky things? I know you can change like Spyro's colors, you can change like the text. What are some fun things? Because you use BizHawk to do a lot of this, right? Yeah, uh, some of the things uh, can be done with just a couple of easy game shark codes. I've also done uh, some other stuff um, uh, that are uh, a little bit more um, involved using the uh, the Lua scripting uh, capabilities of uh, the BizHawk emulator um, to you know do things like uh, injecting and. In like an entire set of palette data to uh, change Spyro's color. Uh, I've never yet changed Spyro's uh, like entire texture. I uh, never got around to doing that. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I know that's like a thing you could like change his color. So you guys saw me kind of fumbling around there with the little hedge maze right there. I'll try my best to like verbally describe what I'm running into and failing in. But what I'm going to start here is by going into Dark Hollow. This is a really nice kind of introduction level to kind of what this is. Um, one thing that's neat about this level is that there would be a bunch of walls right here and you could not see there's like a tunnel down there with those big fat guys that roar at you. But uh, one thing I really like is that there's a lot of uh, actors here. Well, at least I've, I use the word actor, I guess, just like uh, visible, like interactable objects here that you could really get a sense of like you. This would all be covered up. All those fat guys down there, all that enemy over there, all those enemies. You would not be able to see any of that in the normal version of the game. And so this is like kind of a cool, like, I don't know, like Spyro aesthetic, if you will. Someone gets Spyro aesthetics Twitter on the line. But uh, yeah. Basically, uh, what I'm going to do here is um, not 120% the entire game, but I will go through level by level and 120% a few levels, uh, maybe go for a couple of fun tricks and um, kind of really show off what makes some levels harder or easier than others, um, as well as just kind of screw around and have fun with it and uh, bask in the glory that is uh, weird Spyro mod hack type things. Again, this isn't really like a Spyro mod per se. But it's more of a, um, a uh, how, how would you call it, like a, 
like a memory address hack or, or something like that. Game shark coding. Yeah, so, it's a it's a small yeah. uh, RAM injection that just uh, breaks a few pieces of code. Exactly. So you could see just climbing up those stairs for a second time. So the first time I went up them, the, the gems were on them. You could see all the enemies up there, but now it's completely invisible. And this is going to be like kind of a theme about this run that I'm going to have to be careful. And inevitably, I'm going to fail at this, but, uh, but I have to be careful not to clear out too many enemies too early in spots that I know I have to backtrack through. So I'm being careful that, oh, see, look, I'm st literally stuck inside the bottom part here. Try to climb up the stairs and then uh, get up to this guy. But yeah, I mean, just you feel like such a fish out of water in this um, in this uh, hack uh, when you when there's no jet. Like you see the gems there, but once you collect them, that's it. And so, um, if any of you guys do decide to do a playthrough of this, oh my god, first try, I'm a legend. Oh wow. my god, I'm so, okay. Hold on, it's not over yet. No, I'm not a legend. I'm, hold on, I'll try it again. I'll try it. Again. Oh no. But uh, yeah, if any of you guys try to do that, that's like probably, I think Piper would agree with me that the biggest thing to be careful about is uh, is not saving when you've like three quartered percent like completed a level. And that's probably like the number one thing to be careful about. And we just did an out of bounds jump right there. Oh no, okay, yeah, hold, on, that, hold on, recovery. Yeah, yeah that go whole ahead. sequence is hard even when you can see where you're going. Doing that without the ground is uh, impressive. Oh, took a little bit of a swim there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we got some auto mod drama in the chat. Auto mod, come on, man, relax, dude. It's Spyro, man. This is nostalgia. <laughs> Don't get all mean with us now. That's my job is to be mean to the chat, not yours. Okay, so this is the first example of um, of invisible platforming here. Now, what I could do is I could just death abuse in the water to my left here and go back up to the dragon platform. That would be the smart thing to do. But um, instead, what I'm going to show is how you would navigate. There's like a few platforms right here I got to get up. The way you would navigate these is by using flames to sort of suss out the environment in front of you. Um, and so I'm kind of flaming down towards the ground. And you'll see that the flames are like kind of making contact. But now you see they're not. So I'm getting close to the edge here. And so this is how you can kind of triangulate your position um, uh, when there's no gems or anything around you. Oh, get that guy. It's so cool how Spyro's flame ability actually becomes a practical way of navigating um, like when you're in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with that. I mean, like, in all honesty, I think um, this game as, like, a flameless experience uh, would, would be a really interesting sort of meme category if it weren't for the fact that you are required to flame Nasty North to beat him. In fact, you'll notice with a lot of, like, challenge runs of this game that the real bottleneck um is nasty nork himself the and th this like little hack is no exception to that when you get to the nasty nork fight is that, is that everything what am i missing guys did i i think i missed this guy hey guys in the chat let me know uh what did i miss uh but anyways when we get to the nasty nork fight um i'm not planning on beating it i'll try but i'll i will definitely show you guys exactly how annoying it is we'll call that yeah we'll call that 100 percent right there that, i think that's 100 percent I probably should have uh, gone out the vortex if I wanted to go to Toasty, but the cool thing about a little like exhibition like this is we don't have to. We can go wherever we want. And on that note, actually, I'm going to head over to um, Stone Hill, and I want to show something kind of interesting to you guys here. Because we removed a lot of... We removed the low LOD and high LOD terrain uh, is like the exact name for it. Um, that actually removes the wall right here. So normally there's a wall covering Sunny Flight. And so that's completely gone. So that's one of the few examples of actual collision that's been removed by this hack. I didn't even realize that till right now because what I wanted to do was uh, activate the stones but make them make the noise by going to Wizard Peak first. Fun fact, you can go to Wizard Peak and then come back here in order to make these stones make noise. But you can't do that on this version of the game. So it's objectively uh, the worst version of Spyro as a, as a result of that. I'm sorry to inform you guys, um, but yeah. What what are like? How did you find the the game shark codes like low LOD terrain, high LOD? Like, you said there's like a lot of like tinkering you do in BizHawk, right? Yeah. So um, uh, I was working on uh, code basically to inject um, like uh, custom graphics, custom terrain, stuff like that into the game. Um, 
And because of that, I was like figuring out how the data works in the game, but also deconstructing some of the functions uh, in the code that uh, either work with like how to render uh, different parts of the level. Um, or one thing I stumbled across was the code that actually decides which parts of the level get rendered. Uh, there are loads of op optimizations in these games. And one of them is that each level is basically subdivided into um, sectors, basically sort of subdivisions of the level. And only some of the sectors are actually going to be rendered at any given time. Uh, basically the ones that are visible from whatever part of the level Spyro's in. Um, and as part of that, there's uh, some code that basically goes through all of the um, all of the sectors and decides which ones should be visible. Uh, when I got to a point where I was thinking I was understanding how that worked, I just found the uh, found the bit of code that just writes like the the address of each sector into a big table, and I just overwrote it with a uh, an instruction. That was very impressive, by the way. Yeah, no, I, 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 I almost lost over it that. there. You saw, no, yeah, you guys saw that. It's okay, no, go ahead. Actually, yeah. since you're mentioning uh, sectors real quick, um, one thing I've noticed just in, in natural, like, gameplay of this game, you could say, is that uh, lag incurs when you cross over sectors within a level. Like, um, so, like, if you've ever had, like, um, an input dropped when you're doing, like, some glides in Lofty Castle, for example, um, that's because of, um, like, an intersection of different sectors and you're crossing over, like, multiple, you know, they're all, like, kind of coming together, like, at one point, and so it kind of incurs a lot of lag as you cross these sectors. Is that, like, an accurate way of, like, of saying that? That's just, like, my, my interpretation of what's happening, though. I don't know the exact technicality of it. Yeah, I don't, like, yeah, I don't know the, the technical details for lag like that or, like, how it lines up with uh, different types of sectors, because... Uh, uh, there's an interesting thing is that the like, video games tend to have uh, like two representations of the world. They have the physics and they have the graphics and the physics is usually much simpler. Um, Give me a minute. I Go see ahead. this struggle here. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> this, by the way, this is to I, anyone who's going to try this or is watching right now. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to climb up the fountain. A lot of people who play Spyro know this, but I'm trying to climb up the fountain here, which you can only stand on like a couple polygons. And so this is yep. very similar to the uh, Dark Hollow thing. A lot of this stuff I may not get, by the way. So don't be like bummed out with me if I like give up on this in like a minute or two. But I just wanted to try yeah. it. But yeah, it's uh, an interesting little detail. The, the visual representation of the level and the physics representation are both broken down into subsectors for various optimizations, but they're broken along different lines. Uh, there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between visual sectors and physics sectors. Uh, but yeah, while I was just doing coding, I, uh, uh, th there's uh, well, there's some of a science to it, where, uh, you know, in science, there's, uh, you know, you make hypotheses, you test them, um, so there was basically a point where I was thinking, okay, I think I know how this function is working. I think I see what it's doing. If I just stop it from writing into this table, that'll just make all the terrain vanish, won't it? So I tried it, and then everything vanished. I'm like, well, cool. It's it's always nice when you make a prediction about how something will work, and then it does exactly what you expected. Yeah, that's really cool. I had no idea you like really used a sort of like sort of scientific scientific method. Scientistic method. You could tell I'm a true scientist. <laughs> um. But yeah, I, I find that really interesting. I didn't know there was that much that went into even finding these. I, I, I could have just yeah. imagined it was just messing around with the memory values that you can see visualized in BizHawk and just like, okay, that makes stuff go away. What else makes stuff go away? There, there is a lot of that. Um, and some things I do stumble upon, uh, excuse me, stumble upon completely at random. Um, but yeah, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the code that's being like injected here to... Uh, to make this stuff vanish. It's not actually overwriting any kind of data values like that. It's actually changing part of the, the code. And if you try changing code like that and you don't know exactly what you're doing, almost always it's just going to crash the game. Okay, so here in Stonehill now, I you can see I've collected quite a few gems. And this is one of those wide open levels that has just like a lot of kind of empty space, especially when you collect the gems. So when I climb back up here, this is where it really starts to get hard here that I have to kind of make my way. I, I think I strategically left a few gems uh, 
over this way? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> so it's like you get lost really easily in this version of, of events. There it is. There's those gems. So that's like kind of sort of where the opening is. Aha, uh -huh, something like this maybe? If I can even get in here, it's like a huge accomplishment. Maybe I gotta go around this one. It's like, where am I going? What it's a tunnel even... somewhere. Yeah, there is a tunnel somewhere. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, maybe go around. Go around here. Is that something? Oh, no. Oh my god. And then the game like gaslights you into thinking you made it. So this has to be like towards the beginning of the level. Let's ride against the wall here. Kind of push up against it. And then... Oh my goodness. Let's go. Come on. I feel like I'm so close. I'm so close. Do, do people in the chat... Hey, does anyone in the chat think I can get through this uh, tunnel? I might not. Again, I'm not against giving up at any point in any of these <laughs> levels. Just FYI. So get your predictions out now. Will I get through this tunnel? I'm giving myself like a minute. I'm going to try a little bit more. Not to the left, but... Oh! Oh! <gasps> I'm a legend. I'm a legend. I'm a legend. And so, uh, yeah, this uh, this is just pure pain and torture. By the way, to those of you guys who don't know, there is also a Sparksless version. Um, sparksless hack, you could say. Sparksless memory hack. Um, and uh, you can access like uh, hacks like this. It's simplistic hacks like this. this. This is not what you would call like a true ROM hack with like custom level design and thing, things like that. But um, this is uh, something that you can access using uh, an emulator like BizHawk or a free McBoot memory card. So if you're interested in doing this on con I'm doing this on console right now. Uh, and if you're interested in trying to figure out how to do that, um, do join the Spyro Speedrunning Discord and, uh, and just ask. Just ask like, hey, how do, I, how do I do this weird sparksless or terrainless thing? I have a PlayStation help and we will <laughs> help you. I won't help you. I don't know how to do it myself. I literally, I think like it was DZ or Composer or someone helped me uh, figure it out. And now, see, look, I totally messed up because I killed the um, the the shepherd outside of the door here. So now it's like I got to fish around for the door. Oh, yeah, it's we, like, we, yeah. We can see the whirlwind, so we know where the building is, but there's, there's only one hole in the wall. <laughs> So the true strategy is to like really leave stuff, which I'm not doing at all, by the way. Piper did a really great job in uh, in their run of this. There we go, nice. In their run of, I think Piper and I are the only two people who have ever done a 120% playthrough of this, or have even really played on this mode. Um, but yeah, for 120% of this, it is truly a, an odyssey. It it took me about uh, four and a half hours to get through the entire game up to Nasty Nork. And then it took me like six hours to beat Nasty Nork, just to give you perspective on like how long that took. Didn't it take, it took uh, you like way less though, didn't it Piper, like a, maybe like an hour or two? Ooh, um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I don't actually remember. I want to say like uh, it was six hours around for the whole game. I don't remember how much of that was spent on Nasty Nork. All right, so uh, we definitely got 100% in that level. I'm too lazy to go back up and fish my way through all the tunnels, but yeah, 100%, right, guys? Yeah. Totally. Yep, we're counting it. So, and again, like, super great example of, like, platforms that are so obvious when the gems are there, but then try to do that exact same platforming again without any of the gems there, and you all you have is the flame as reference. So it just becomes so much more difficult. So what I'm actually going to do here for this tunnel is I am going to leave some of the gems now. I'm going to try to be a little bit more strategic here. Yeah, I know. I'm too quick for you guys' predictions. Don't worry. There'll be more. There'll be more things I'll get stuck on. I'll try the Artisan's Wall Glide. Uh, not right now, but after this uh, this level here. A cool thing about um, cool like muscle memory speedrunning thing is you can hold like square and left and square and right here. So even though casually these like little towers that I would be like that I'm charging down right now are kind of kind of casually difficult to reach if you're not like pretty familiar with the mechanics. Um, little kind of cheesy speed running like consistency strats like that make a uh, make this run uh, more manageable for sure. Yeah, I I I use that for those definitely. Uh, it's, it really does train. I think uh, 
it tests you for things like muscle memory in the right places and like trusting yourself with your muscle memory. The more you can trust your muscle memory, you'll find the more naturally a run like this uh, comes to you. It's it's quite an interesting like mind game. Yeah, in fact, in that area, just before entering the level, I like I usually use um, analog stick for, for playing Spyro, but uh, those setups coming off of the uh, the whirlwind, I just use D-pad for that um, just to make entirely certain it's consistent. Um, so yeah, yeah, just remembering that makes that easy. I don't have to see where the towers are. Exactly. You know, other people, uh, another like kind of strategy like that, where it's like if you're an analog player, but like using D-pad for consistency on certain precise things. Um, wizard proxies, especially the wizard proxy in Haunted Towers for 120% is one that I know a lot of analog players will switch to D-pad for. Um, just because it's like you hold right coming out of the whirlwind. And that has all of its own nuance to it as well, but... Yeah, there's definitely something to be said for like just developing consistency, uh, consistency strats. Now here's a wonky glide right here. I'm gonna see if I can get it. Oh. So I'm gonna start by getting on top of this thing if I can. Maybe I'm a little too far. Yeah, right here. So now we gotta test to see where the end of this platform is. I'm like on top of like a green grassy knoll right here. Yeah, Phoenix Aki said something really interesting that a lot of people would say in my chat um, is that it'd be cool to see like a side by side view. Nice, barely got on there. You saw that. Well, let me see if I get the quick kill. Oh, legendary. My God. Oh, nice. Doggies done. in the chat. Let's go. Um, it'd be cool to see a side by side view. Uh, I don't think such a thing is currently possible. Currently, no. <laughs> Believe me, I thought about ways to try and do that. Oh, did you? I wanted to do it so badly, but yeah. yeah. That would be awesome. I totally am in agreement, but, but alas. But, uh, you know, with the uh, spiral ROM hacking, I'm not sure if a lot of you guys saw this, but uh, there was a uh, a sort of like Spyro 1 custom level that was posted on Twitter recently. Um, I know HWD was involved with that, but it was also another person as well. I forgot I forgot what their username was, but it's it's really just exciting to me. I don't know anything about it. I'm not like in in tune with any of that sort of stuff. Like... Like, I don't know these guys super well, but what I can say is that for me, as someone who, like, plays Spyro and makes videos around this game, like, all the time, it is so exciting to see a ROM hack of this game coming. Um, or just, like, the, or just maybe a tool that people can use to make custom levels and ROM hacks and things like that. Um, that, I'm certain, if that comes and it's, like, an easily accessible open source tool, I'm, like, so confident that it'll breathe new life into a... Breathe, breathe a whole new like mod community for this game. I, I really do think the fandom is still there and that uh, a lot of players who still explore these games want, want to do something like that. Okay, I'm going for the wall glide. No. No, okay, good try, good try. I'll give it a few more tries. All right, predictions. Uh, 10 or more tries, question mark, or failure. Less than 10 tries, more than 10 tries, or failure. Those are the options. Oh, 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 is Phoenix not going to be able to do it before I get it? Am I a legend? Less than 10 tries? Hold on. I have to get to the toasty portal. If I don't get to the toasty portal, portal it's a failure. Which, remember, you can see the, um, the smoke. That's a dragon head right there. So I still have to make another precise jump and then go around in order to do this right. It's If I mess this up, I'll just go through the mountain. So I don't want that. No! Got barely, like I said, I just barely went through the mountain right there. It ain't over yet. I want to try that one more time, or at Hello. least a couple more times. Uh. I know, right? I know. Uh, wait, hold on. What are these? Oh, yeah, those are from inside the... Yeah, strategically leaving these. Hello? Following this guy. I guess that doesn't ma matter because you can just follow that guy in, but... Predictions for getting it at all? Heck yes. No. Oh, that's not working. Let's try that again. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we've definitely been um, kind of scraping. I, I don't want to be uh, demeaning in saying this, but we've definitely been scraping the bottom of the barrel in terms of ideas that are, like, possible without, like, fully, like, having a ROM hack tool for this game. Um, I mean, the ideal situation is that we have custom levels that we can play in this game, you know, that aren't just like, okay, let's let's just try to do it without charging or let's try to do it without flaming or... 
Let's take away the, the landmass. Like, that sort of stuff is funny. Or, God forbid, the uh, PlayStation 2 remote run. That's like PTSD for me right there. So, those yeah, sorts I'm... of things are, are really fun and like they're, they're really cool challenges, but man, it's like it really makes you think that there could be so much more in terms of like um, mods for this game. Oh, that was. I Was that close? I almost said that was close, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, custom levels in this game. Okay, huge. I'm gonna try like right here. No, the same thing happened again. No, no. I'm, I'm gonna literally try just jumping off, like up and off to the right. I'm not even sure if that works, but I will try. If I get in toasty, I am. I will be a happy camper. I'll be a happy Spyro gamer here. I know, right, Sensei? I'm trying to land on like a third um, kind of platform there, but maybe I don't have to. We'll see. Oh, okay. So Piper, do you have any uh, funny like uh, mod or whatever hack type stuff? I, by the way, we didn't even talk about Lua Script. What's Lua Script all about? I oh, mean, uh, like the the Lua Ghost thing I was making. Yeah, the ghost. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's a um, so Lua Ghost is something I released earlier this year. It's a Lua Script for the BizHawk emulator uh, that adds uh, basically ghost racing functionality to this game. Um. It's basically the closest thing to a uh, a mod I've made for the game so far. Sadly, it does not work on uh, hardware. It's only an emulator thing, but it basically records your movements through levels, and then uh, you can play those back as uh, little wireframe ghosts in the level and race against them. Um, and yeah, I've been uh, I've been doing races against ghosts ghosts through the whole game, and it's a lot of fun. It's very different from how I'm. Like how I normally speed run. Um. Okay. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna try this strategy. I'm gonna climb up this a little bit. Hopefully, I don't fall. Okay. And we're just gonna send it. Oh my god! I think I got it. Let's go! I'm oh. a legend. I am no. a legend. Believers, well where done. Are you at? I am here. <laughs> I have done been here. Uh, pay the believers. Hey up. Oh my god, the orange soda, the level. If you thought the, the like, the freaking uh, lava in this level was Fanta <laughs> orange soda, I mean, just wait till you see the freaking <laughs> invisible version. You know what? Oh, I, I should have gone for my around the side thing, but whatever. We gotta swag out as much. I gotta, like, carry on the, the torch of Jeremy Thompson and just swag out as much as I can on this run. While verbally uh, berating Waffle. Just completely just beating up waffle behind the scenes it's sad what jeremy did to him you know i just i just want to i just want to say my heart goes out to you waffle jeremy acts all all cool and stuff but you get into a you get onto the racetrack with that guy and he's out for blood okay so i'm gonna go up to the curb here hopefully yes okay i'm gonna <laughs> i should have left it again should have left a couple gems there yeah, you jumped over those gyms. You made your life hard. Yep. Okay, okay. I think I'm on this side. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We're not out of the woods yet. I can still run off the left side here. Aha, beautiful. So it's like I have to resist the urge to do all this, like, 120% muscle memory. And, like, jump over stuff, as, uh, as Piper said. Little doggy strat. Oh, nice. By the way, just like side note, that's such a cool strat. Um, that's probably like one of like the more like recent, like I would say mechanics discoveries in this game is uh, is that if you flame one of the doggies and charge away from it while it's at the tip, uh, while it's like in the air and make it jump a second time, it like sort of uh, triggers one of those fail safes where the game automatically uh, kills the enemy, similar to it like jumping off the edge. And that's like crazy to me because it's like that wasn't even known about until like 2021. And it's like legitimately saves time in that level. See, and it's, that's why if you guys ever get to see a TAS of just that level, Toasty, 120%, it's really cool. I think uh, Lucia has uh, has made one. 
Luckix, or AKA uh, Luminous something. I think they changed their name recently. Yeah, I saw someone had asked if uh, Lua Ghost would ever be available on uh, hardware. Uh, sadly, probably not if, if I'm in charge of it. Someone else who knows more about hardware wants to try to set that up. That would be really cool, but uh, I am not currently much of an expert on uh, I'm doing that kind of stuff. Uh, I was it's, pro basically... it's probably possible, I'd imagine, but I don't know. Yeah, it's like I'm sure it's possible. Um, it's just a matter of how much effort it takes and uh, how much uh, yeah. it's like the person who builds it needs to have uh, more knowledge than I currently have. Hey, since we're talking about challenge runs here, did yeah. you know that it is possible to get up this little like step right here without jumping? It's a pretty big step, as as you can tell, pretty hefty. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell here, but. This is a hefty step, but what you can do is you can actually use the poles, like, on the side of the dock, you know, those, like, wooden poles that hold it up, to, like, roll up the side. Now, there's no way in heck that I'm going to be doing that uh, right here, but, um, you know, it might be po I don't think a jumpless run of this game is possible, but a low jump run is, like, an interesting concept for a challenge run while we're on the subject of that. Okay, I'm not going that way. <laughs> Dare I? <laughs> All right, you know what? Hey, for the fans, got to go for it. For Jeremy. I don't think I can get this, though, but I will try. I'll wait till he goes down a little bit. Yeah, like, so That's this is the top of the ground here. Oh, God. I am a little lost. All right, there we go. This should be the top polygon here. Find kind of where the wall is. Oh, come on. I I, I had a feeling about that. I, th I thought that was going to work. Oh, one more. Give it one more shot. I think the issue is that uh, the chat isn't really believing in me enough. I, I think I don't see enough cute <laughs> emotes in the chat of like Spyro like flying through the air like with the goggles and stuff. Uh, where am I going? I thought, I thought I was facing. That's the other thing is you'll get like really confused where you're pointing sometimes. Um, so yeah, the three gems there. Okay, I want to be here. Yeah, there's Nightblade. Okay. <laughs> so confusing. This As a viewer. Yeah, go ahead. This is not easy what they was trying to do uh so yeah there's there's a big pit of ooze and there's a wall that he's having to try to do a wall glide with but doing wall glides when you can't see where the wall is or exactly what direction you're facing relative to the wall is really really hard getting the artisans wall glide was super impressive yeah they don't they don't call it a they don't call him wally for nothing i'll put it that way you know what i mean <laughs> So, yeah, this right here was the first place, I think, when I was doing this, that I got really stuck. <laughs> you can see the little, like, glide, like, raising in height. It's like, my heart, like, jumps. Okay, I'm at the dragon, not at the start. Right, there we go. <laughs> really? The other thing is, like, definitely do not try this if you're not, like, intimately familiar with every level's map. You know? Because if you just don't know, like, you better have, like, the game up next to you. For reference, yeah, that was part of the challenge for me when I, uh, like when I went through this. Um, I I'm, it. It. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yo, go ahead. <laughs> Alex, go ahead. let's take a moment to appreciate you being a legend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But, I'm um, always humble. You guys know me, always humble. Uh, uh, uh yeah, so. I was, uh, yeah, for me, it was, uh, I was billing it as, uh, let's find out if this speedrunner actually knows the layouts of the levels or has just been relying on muscle memory this whole time. And there were definitely some places where I was stuck for a long time because the level just did not actually look the way I thought it did. Yeah, you know what level was super like that for me was the actually nasty Nork, the, especially the lava room. Traversing the lava room, I remember oh. like in my six hour grind, there were so many moments that were like, it's like, it seems like with some of the later platforms, it seems like you should be able to just jump and glide straight to them. But you really have to, and I know I took this strategy from you, Piper, is with some of the platforms, when you cross like into onto the other wall, you have to like kind of turn in the air, the glide, like kind of tap it to the left and right respectively, like curve it in. And it's like, that's something you don't even have to do in like the in normal gameplay of this game, which technically this is, but it's like, it's, it's just, mind boggling it's just mind blogging boggling you know yeah, you know what i'm talking that... about piper how you have to like tap like during the glide to like move it into the platforms for the lava yes 
Yeah, yeah there, there were a couple of pl couple of those platforms that just were not in the spot that I thought they were going to be relative to all the other platforms. Okay, so I'm not going for the wall glide here, but I am going for, even just going for the quote unquote casual strat here is still really difficult because you know, can't see anything. So what I'm doing is I'm, yeah, I'm lining up with this platform here, jumping on it. Now I'm looking at the, there's a slope and then a flat part on top of it. So I'm going up, I'm following kind of the angle of the slope and we should yep. be on top of it soon. Let me make sure. I'm, I, again, you can't really do like the flame testing the ground thing like here. Like, so there's ground in front of, in front of me, right? But uh, you can't really do that on a sloped surface because it's like the camera's wonky and he doesn't really like point towards the ground correctly. I mean, you can, it's just wonky. Okay, and so you can see here now he's flaming off the edge. I do have a little more room right here. Okay. So now I believe you have to jump off. This is where my legacy skill comes in here is you have to jump off a bit to the right. So <sighs> prayer is in the chat. Can we get this jump over the ravine? No. <laughs> oh. Not at all. I don't know Can how I many tries that piece? took, but it was a lot. Yeah, this is a this is a tough one. I'll I'll try it a couple more times just because it's it's an intriguing jump. Um, but yes, I can definitely get to rotis with no scenery. The hard part, actually, uh, Phoenix, is getting to the uh, end of treetops, which we'll explore that a little bit later as well. You actually do have to legitimately follow the uh, the thief's uh, pathing in order to like you know take the casual strap you can't just do stone knot skip and do the wall bump you know there you can't see the wall so I, you have I, to like, i tried yeah we both we piper and i, I tried failed it. yeah and so get up there all right yeah until i broke all the chests i was like maybe i can line this up just using the using the chests for positioning after i broke those it's like no yeah i'll just take the intended route Am I facing the right way here? I might want to face a little bit more this way. So I'm going to aim a little bit more leftwardly this time. Yeah, this was one of the points where I like I knew I was trying to glide across this to get to a to a platform with the entrance to a tunnel. But I had no idea where the entrance to the tunnel was relative to like the chests uh, that we can see up there. I'll give it one more. Oh, I'll give it one more try here. If I don't get it, then uh, then F's in the chat. It'll be our first F of the run, of which that I guarantee you there there will be more than one. <laughs> yeah, it's like I I know that the I know that the entrance must be to the right of where we see those chests that we're trying to get to. But we don't know the... how far to the right. I feel like I'm gonna try yeah. more to the right this time. Yeah, it like it, it curves to the left, but yeah, I just did not have a good concept of how far many deaths were had yes, yes. and then when we i don't know about you piper but when i did this run i did not do any like life cheats or anything so i would eat the game overs you know and do this dozens oh. of times did you life cheat no uh, yeah i uh, yeah. i had oh, infinite you... lives cheater i so i have <laughs> world record de facto world record did not cheat all right yeah i was i was uh like I was listening to Dragon Cut scenes too. I was not pretending to speed run. <laughs> I think I got it. I think I got it. Let's go. Yep, that's it, baby. Go in. The... No, God dang it, man. Oh, Are no. you... I thought that was the tunnel right there, man. Jesus freaking God. All right, well, you guys get it. I'm going to count that one. I'm going to count that. <laughs> I thought it was the tunnel. You guys don't. Never mind. You guys don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> I just don't understand. F's in chat for that. That's an F. That's the first F of the run. That's an F and a W. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, hold on. Test the ground here so we can glide. Actually, let's head over towards Night Flight. Okay, so we can use the... I'm not going to grab those green gems. I'm just going to head towards this way until we hit the wall. Oh, but actually, we need to blow up this thing. We haven't blown up that yet. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's weird because like you know the wall um, for Sunny Flight is already open, but the breakable wall, pardon me, the breakable wall here is still solid. So it's like I don't understand the logic. Surely there's some like game development explanation for that, or whatever. 
I'm jumping. Oh, I'm not making. I'm making it. Okay. Uh, where should I go? Let's grab a, a dragon. Oh, let's not die. Let's grab this dragon, and then let's blow up the um, the platform to go to night flight. I'll just do night flight for funsies, just because I like the. Uh... Okay, hold on. Let me triangulate this a little bit. So night flight's there. So I'm assuming that this will work. If I complain. Okay, let's go a little more right. Okay, a little more right. This uh, maybe I'm not right. Maybe I'm not left enough here. Oh, I think that I think one of those hit. Did one of those hit? I think one of those hit. Yeah, nice. Phoenix is saying nice. I think one of those hit. It was hard to tell. Okay, now I'm inching forward towards the platform. I'm by the way, to those who are wondering why I'm doing the flight levels, it's just for the aesthetic and the bangers, and it's just a nice, it's a little more relaxing because you can see where everything you're trying to grab is. Yeah, that is a nice feature of flight levels. So I'm really just trying to pad out this <laughs> exhibition run as much as possible. <laughs> hey, they gave us an hour. I'm going into night flight. <laughs> I, no, okay, hold on. Am I... That's that's a wall, so maybe, ooh, maybe I didn't get the platform there. Let's compare it to okay. There's all right, should be around this way. Be honest, make sure there's no wall in front of me. So actually, I might have been pointing at a wall there earlier with the cannon. I might have not hit the the breakable platform here. We shall find out. I'm <laughs> inching my way towards the edge. Oh, okay, we are at the edge now. Prayers, thoughts and prayers. Okay, uh, maybe we didn't hit the breakable thing. Maybe I'll try breaking it one more time, and then I will promptly give up. The great th wait, where am I? Oh yeah, the great thing about um a run like this, I'm gonna let him go to the camp. Yeah. The great thing about a run like this is that um or an exhibition like this is that I don't have to sit here for like however many hours it takes to get whatever. Like do oh I got it yeah oh legendary okay we're good. But if you do want to see me, or Piper for that matter, uh, sit there for literal hours, or at least many arduous minutes to figure stuff out in this, uh, we each have uh, respective videos. Mine on YouTube, and Piper, I believe, has this uh, highlighted on their Twitch channel. So uh, do check that out. If, there, if we mess up any strats here, you know, it's like you can check us out, like actually getting it. There is video proof. Even though Piper is a confirmed cheater, I mean, she be banned from leaderboards that don't exist but that's just my, <laughs> that's just my opinion <laughs> we need to make some leaderboards for this just so we can ban me from them yeah just so i can be the only one on them <laughs> oh my god <laughs> second place i'm gonna put the note underneath this he is a confirmed cheater they are confirmed cheater yeah oh give me this okay i'm give. i'm killing you know what night flight i don't care <laughs> goodbye night flight i don't care about you get out of here uh, let's do Shemp, why not? Let's do or actually you know what? Let's go hard mode. Let's go uh let's go ice cavern. Oh yeah, let's do it. I'm I'm taking it on. This is sure. definitely a bad idea. So Ice Cavern is one of the toughest levels. In fact, what I should do probably is save um outside of Ice Cavern. That'd be ideal. Well, whatever. If I mess it up, it's not a big deal. But this level's crazy, and uh here's why. Is because when you collect everything, like those gems, for example, I mean, it's just like the rest of the run. You collect gems in this level, and it makes it so hard to traverse. And specifically, I want to see if I can get this glide out of curiosity. Okay, I missed that. I hit, like, the wall or the pole or something. I'm gonna, I'll go through the level normally. Um, but specifically... Um, that, yeah, just... that wall sticks out so much further than I thought it did. Yeah. I, did, I think I died that exact way. Yep. Yep. And then, because you don't want to go too far, because then you think you're going to hit the pole, but then you hit the wall, and so it's like, oh, I'm dumb. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, just moving through this level normally, but when we get towards towards the ending, like, even right here is so annoying. You have to go, like, you know, there's, like, a void to our right here, so it's like we're, <laughs> you naturally end up, like, bearing way, way too far to the left. So it's funny how your mind plays tricks on you like that. You're trying to be safe, and you end up just having, like, you just, you create the wrong map in your level, in your mind. Of your level in your mind. English. 
I'm going to grab this dragon. I will continue here. I'm, you know what? Just for funsies, I'm just going to open up the, uh, the chest. And, but you know what? I will also show you guys this area, though. Over here. I'll try not to collect gems as much as possible, but... So you can see, right, oops, well, that doesn't matter. Right here, here's a bridge, right? On either side of these gems, it's a void. So if I collect these gems, I gotta sit there, and you guys saw me like flaming the ground like back in Peacekeeper's Homeworld. You gotta sit there and do that like extra hardcore here. Not to mention there's like shelves on either side that you can just run into. Like this part is is like one of the most annoying parts if you if the gems are gone. So I'm gonna be careful here to avoid gems. I'm gonna be careful there to avoid gems. And in doing that, uh, hopefully do not self-destruct. But the good news about that is I can uh, go get the gem chest and freaking party, <laughs> you know what I mean? Get a few gems, why not? 120%, close enough. I remember, I think there were a few places where I deliberately damaged down to Sparksless just to make it easier to not pick up gems. That's a genius idea. See, Piper, this is why I put you on the calls. You got the freaking <laughs> best ideas. I love the uh, little, like, flags and, like, little artifacts like that. For example, the cactuses, cacti in um, Dry Canyon. Like, they're still there. All these poles. You can see the bats, like, where all the bats are perched. I actually did a uh, a fodder tier list earlier today. Yes, I, <laughs> yes, I am that far gone as a Spyro creator. And... Um, yeah, I did a fodder tier list, and these bats, like, really made me, um, take a moment, because it's like, these have some of the most, uh, I would say the deepest AI of some, of many of the fodder in this game, uh, with the exception of, like, the rats, like, they, this one is literally perched underneath the ground, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like, this is like a platform, like, think about that. He, like, comes out from under, like, around the ground, like, these are, like, cool things that you don't really get to see, unless, uh, you're playing, like, a version of the game like this. Like, where, you would not see that guy normally, and until he, like, flies out or whatever. I don't know. As a total nerd for this game, it's, I think it's pretty cool. I think those oh, bats yeah. are cool. If you think those bats are cool, press 1. That's all I'm saying. I'm turning into Jeremy. I know. He's my hero, man. I'm sorry. Okay, so let me go Sparksless here. Do the Piper strat. <laughs> I'm stuck <laughs> around the side of the pole there. I see maple-typed chicken. That was close. It was a close guess but that is not a number <laughs> okay we're gonna go down to sparksless again the reason i'm doing this is so i don't accidentally collect these gems goodbye so we're gonna jump in between them here and now the real real hard part here is um climbing up this part so i'm gonna grab the dragon real quick now again with the gems it ain't no big deal right but, here, I'll just go ahead and collect the gems here, just to kind of show off how difficult this is. Now, ordinarily, you would just jump over to this and make it and continue. I'm going to do the, the stupid thing here and go back down. I I might, just by doing that, I might have, like, like quote-unquote, soft-locked, effectively soft-locked myself out of this playthrough. And the reason for that is, tra is traversing those shelves right there is like one of the craziest things. I'm just gonna try to do it for you guys. I'm not gonna spend forever on it, but my first playthrough actually ended here. I I succeeded on this playthrough on attempt two because these shelves are so hard to navigate. Uh, so first we gotta find them. That's like the first step. There's one, there's the first one. Jump on that. And now you gotta know it's like five or six like little platforms. And I'm already dead. I'm already, I think that was a little too far to the left there. I'll try it once or twice more. Don't even bother. By the way, Phoenix is watching. Don't even bother trying to do a prediction here. I'm not going to get it. But <laughs> hopefully I can get a couple of, of uh, platforms here. Okay. So now we can use the flame to see where the next thing is. Also, it's nice that those uh, gems are there. They kind of give a little bit of reference. Hold on. So you can actually hear where the flame uh, hits the platform. Whereas normally if I just flame into the air, it's just the one. <laughs> but when you flame and hit the platform, you do see a little visual artifact of like the white smoke there, but you also hear like an extra, like a. 
And there you go. It's just that easy. Now just do that like <laughs> freaking five more times and you're good. But I mean, dude, like talk about like looking at the game a different way. I'm like, I'm like half taking off my headphones here to here. There we are. So it's like, it's they're never where you expect them to be. Nice. Dude, if I make it all the way, I'm popping off. I'm sorry. Like I <laughs> like in advance, I'm sorry. There. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Should I just go for it? What do you think, Piper? Should I just go for the jump? Let me get close to the edge. Oh, uh, I mean might might as well. I think we gotta YOLO it, y'all. What do you guys say in the chat, YOLO? Thoughts and prayers. I'm a genius. I am a legend at this game. You guys do not understand. This is why they gave me world record. That's why they gave oh. me world record, guys. I wish you guys could see the game the way I do. It's it's sad. It's sad being this based. I wish I, wish I could share my gift with you all. Okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> All right, well, I'll clear out some of this area and then we'll move on a bit. Should we, um, I might try, I'll go to Dry Canyon and then uh, call it quitsies on Peacekeepers. Uh, by the way, how are we doing on time? 9.42, actually, you know what? I should skip forward to some other home worlds, I think. Because we are getting forward in time and I do want to show off uh, some other levels. As expected, I got a little too excited in the early game and I made that jump. I made that jump, but that is not an easy jump. Uh, yeah. So, you know what, guys? I showed off everything I wanted to show off here. Let's continue. Let's go to, um, let's go to treetop. We were talking about treetops. I would love to go visit that real quick. And, uh, yeah, guys, like, I, if you see me, like, popping off, like, I want you to, like, attempt these jumps that I'm doing, like, just in the normal game. Like, you know, that's all, that's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. They're not impossible, but man, with the terrain's gone, it makes you feel like such a beast. I'm sorry. I'm just nerding now. We're going beast makers. So two levels that are particularly difficult here are um, are Misty Bog and Treetops. Now, Piper, do you want to tell them about your experience in Misty Bog? Ooh. Yeah. It was a, that's, it was a <laughs> that's some long, long, painful memories there. <laughs> yeah, it was tra so. traumatic, you might say. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so, chat. You know, you know what uh, what this level looks like. There's that sort of upper area, then there's the lower area, and then when you're in the lower area, you just have to climb on top of this building to get back up. You, you, you remember how you have to climb up that building? Do you remember all the gems to show you where things are? Because there aren't any. Yeah. There's it nothing. Is... There's not, you think about every platform that doesn't have a gem on it. That's literally impossible, almost impossible to navigate. Yeah, uh, well, and everything is just a little bit too far away for you to feel it out with your flames. Yeah, yeah that's the other thing is like you got, you guys saw how I was like, you know, close enough to those uh, shelves in Ice Cavern, those platforms that I could listen for the flame to like make contact with the platform I was trying to go to. These, this platforming, after I get past this little trick right here, which yes, I am going for this trick. I'm about to do like several uh, damage abuses, which is like an any percent route uh, to kind of skip to the ending area. But first I'm just- uh, Yeah, I guess, kind of let's get to the juicy part. Yeah. You guys get to see the pre pop off before we get to the actual pop off. Okay, so here we are at the edge. Uh, make sure I'm kind of triangulated perpendicularly here. Beep, beep, boop, 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 boop. All right. World record gaming acquired. Pray for me. Oh, yeah. First try, ladies and gentlemen. First try. Amazing. Ooh. All right. Beautiful. The sleep paralysis for. Yeah, he's one of many nightmare creatures in this game. But really, I gotta give these. By the way, this is the part that Piper was talking about is right here, making these, yep. these jumps. So let's see if I can get them. There should be the thing right there. Yeah, but yeah, so if if any of you guys in the chat decide no, if any of you guys in the chat like uh, have like your one scariest enemy in any of the three Spyro games, please share it. I actually genuinely want to know. 
<laughs> Normally I'd tell my chat like I don't care, I need to focus, but this time I actually do care. I I, I want to know like true scariest enemy for me, it was the Beatles in High Kids. The Hitman the Beatles. Okay. Uh so I think I have to go be between here. That's Yeah, so yeah, that was So awesome. Deo's aiming for a rather thin wall that he has to get on top of. And uh, you can kind of use those reeds down in the uh, down in the swamp to kind of help set it up, but it's yeah. still a small target to aim for. Oh shoot, that's fine. We got the dragon right there. Yeah, I think you got to aim for the reed on the left. Is that what it is? I literally did not practice this before this part. By the way, in case that's not painfully obvious. <laughs> Guys, I was busy going for world record. All right, cut me a break. <laughs> I, was, I I had to give up playing Spyro to play Spyro. I'm gonna aim for yeah. I'm gonna aim for the reeds here, uh, and I'm also gonna go for non-charge glides. Just jump and glide. That might be yeah. I think these are too juicy. You know what? I might try. I might try going for a jump, charge out the air. I'm gonna go for one of those. I feel like that's the spacing on that's gonna be a little bit, a little better. I feel like I might be going too far or something. That's something weird. Uh, and how are we doing on time here? 9:47. We do have a few minutes. So if I don't get this in a couple minutes here, then I will move on, which I probably won't. But then it's like, this isn't the only jump, though, is the thing. There's oops, there's yeah. this jump, and then there's the next, like, getting to the stairs. Then it's getting up the stairs, and then it's getting over to the, you know, back up to the main area. It's like, it's an odyssey. It is an odyssey. We have five minutes left to avoid going. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go straight to Nasty North. There's always more stuff to show off. There's treetops, there's everything, but we are going to go to Nasty North. Um, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to fail Nasty. You know what I kind of want to do? I want to just switch to a, to a loot file and just like, and just get the ending just so I can end this like reasonably, <laughs> like with the ending. What do you guys say? I'll, I'll leave it up to the chat. You guys want to see me fail Nasty North or do you want to see me beat Nasty's loot? Chat poll. You guys got to decide, like, right now. But for now, I'm going to head towards north. I don't know, guys. Loot's pretty cool. Loot, right? I wish I could do both. I'm going to do loot. I like Strawberry's idea. We're going to loot because Nasty Norg would just be depressing. I'm just telling you guys right now. If you want to see it, check out my YouTube video. Yada yada, self-promo. That was an odyssey. I am not going to put you guys... I'm not going to end this on a bad note. We're going to end on a positive note here. And I'm heading over to Nasty's loot. And getting the 120% ending, and I might go a little over in doing that. So we should be able to complete it reasonably quick enough. So this is a full, you know what? This is, this could be a full 120% run right here, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. In fact, I think it will be. So, you know, no. Ch I, did the, I did the Piper strats here. I cheated. <laughs> ah, glad to hear I was a, a good teacher. Yeah, you're, a, you're an inspiration to me. In speed running. <laughs> me, and, uh, me and Piper, we were joking around that uh, that after this um, this little exhibition, someone's going to come into like our chat in like a year and a half and be like, wow, you really you really got me into Spyro like with that <laughs> invisible showcase. And now like, <laughs> now I've really, my whole life got turned around. I was on drugs, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't keep a, keep a job. And ever since, now that I'm an invisible Spyro player, Everything's different now. Okay, I think I is, are these the steps? Where am I? No, oh no my joke, God. though. I would I would love to see someone actually route an invisible speed run of this. Yeah, unironically, I think that would be really cool as well. Any of these, any challenge run. I think the more the more people that do it, the more fun it becomes. If it's just like one person does it and then the end, it's like okay, whatever. That's a novelty, but then it becomes something. The moment two people get involved in something, it becomes bigger than yourself. That's like the beauty of speedrunning. Is the more people get involved in a game or a category, um, the more of a phenomenon it is. Oh, oh if I'd have hit that, I would have, would have said, man, I was about to say. Oh my god, what a relief. I'm so relieved that we did not go to Nasty Nork. <laughs> I thought for sure I was gonna like embarrass myself in Nork. No, I've, this has actually been quite a quite a blast. I, 
you know, I just want to say, maybe it's the chat looking so cute here, but, you know, it's cute chat. <laughs> Diddles in the chat. Okay. Yeah, for anyone who uh, doesn't doesn't quite get what we're on about with uh, Nasty, with Nasty Nork, uh, just consider the fact that in that final chase sequence, those, those platforms you have to jump across that are over lava, those are moving. You cannot slow down. You yeah, you can't like, triangulate. You know, you see me triangulating my like position on the platform. You cannot do that there. You have to blindly jump across like 10. How many is it? Like nine or 10 platforms while they recede into the wall. Like it's so and that's after doing the obstacle course. So it's like, you know, it's yeah. not like if you're playing on console, you can't like save state it and just like try it again. You have to go through the whole obstacle course like freaking annoying. Okay, hopefully I didn't activate him too early. Okay, no, I didn't. I know at least once, like right at the end, there's there's a little gap you can fall into between two of the steps, uh, where Spyro gets stuck in a falling state. Oh my god! I almost had him. I, uh, yeah, I ended up in that at least once. Doing oh, stuck in those cracks at the end of the yeah. lava part. Yeah. Oh it's my god! I'm so, so lucky close. that didn't happen to me. Yeah. That's basically yeah. what happened during my uh, remote control run. Okay, he's going back. This is so cool. You can like actually see when he goes back. Oh god, please don't die. We're going through like a weird Kirby tunnel here, so if I can find my way through. Use flames to this, figure it out. Yeah, this tunnel wrecked me. Nice. Oh my god, based guys. I feel like I'm, I'm on world record pace right now. <laughs> uh, did I open it? Yeah, I tried chasing that fella through the uh, through the tunnel, but I eventually just got it when I successfully did the quick kill. Hello, am I am I stoned? What's going on here? Let me do this way. No, where am I? Okay, there's. We want to get up there. There we go. No idea where you are. I know, right? Like, who? How do you figure this out? Piper and I, I would think, are, we're both pretty intimately familiar with the level geometry here, but it's like, you just get gaslit into like, okay, it's a whole other level now. It's like, what? Gaslight in ass game, dude. Okay. Had to make sure. See me with my one earphone off strat. You hear the sizzle. By the way, I highly recommend this to those of you guys who play Spyro or just any any game that requires sound cues at a GDQ. Um, I, I recommend the one ear off strat if you don't like listening to game volume and headphones, which I don't. I'm like a true retro gamer, you know, that likes hearing hearing the buzz of the CRT and all the all the. Cr oh, 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 come no. on. No. How much time do we have? Do I have a minute, oh. Phoenix? Can, can I can I beat it? Can can you just let me speed run it real quick? What what's it looking like, Phoenix? <laughs> I always find a way to choke. Okay, one more. Okay, we got this. One more. Okay, we got this. Just should be a little quicker this time. <laughs> I'm having GDQ flashbacks all over again. Missing credit skip ass. Yeah, I I have I have done that before, not realizing I was at low health going into that. Too confident, clearly. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and again, no no gems, so yep. super awkward. Give me that. Nice. That was actually quicker than I was expecting. Go this way. Oh my god, this is insanity. I almost want to just like load the file and like hold on. If I can find it though. Oh, oh, the pain, the pain. We might not get the credits, guys. I'll do this for another few minutes, but... Oh, there we go. Hold on. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. I'll let you guys know when it's over, all right? I'm, I'm not going to, like, load a save file and do the whole thing again. Okay, not there. We want to grab the other key, which we should see. There he is. There's some buildings in the way, probably. You know, it wouldn't be an invisible run if we didn't make the entire level as hard as possible for ourselves. Okay, oh, this yeah. is going to be a true challenge right here. So there's the vortex. That's like my only visual reference. And it's going to be to the right of that. Yeah, I didn't comment on it much before, but it, 
a lot of these levels have elements like trees and things like that or like the lampposts and things like that which uh you know look like part of the environment but they're not in the same rendering system that renders the ground and the walls they're actually treated as entities the same as uh the same as enemies the same as gems all that so they still get rendered that is so convenient yeah we don't have any of that in this in this level There he is. Okay, hold on. We're getting close. Yeah. Now, this is another tough one here. Oh, this is so insane. My, no. This is where it just gets really insane at this point. I have no idea how you're going to get this last one. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's backtrack towards the vortex. Here's my plan. I'm going to head to... Oh, God, where am I? Oh, God, I'm all the way in the in the lava. Oh, my God. Guys, I'm so lost. I'm so lost. It feels so possible, right, guys? It feels so possible. I had to just die in the lava room. I had to do... Or whatever, in the gem thing. Oh my god. No, don't die. Please. Oh. Okay, just land on ground somewhere. If I die here, I'll just go ahead and call it. Which yeah, I, I have think no is no totally idea what happen. part of the level you're even in right now. Yeah, me me neither. I have no idea. I, my only goal right now is to hopefully find the vortex. I'm trying to stay high here. You stay high, no lie. You know this. So let that be a lesson to all of you Spyro players. That's it. You know what? I'm going to call it on that. Guys, <laughs> GG. 120%. Spyro the Dragon. You defeated Nasty Nork. Yada, yada. We did it. <laughs> but that was the Invisible Showcase. Um, GG's in the chat. I know, I know. Unceremonious. But that was honestly, I think, a really fun little exhibition for you guys. You guys totally, I think, got a great idea of what... Uh, the invisible run was all about and i just want to give a special shout out to piper one more time he's in the call with me thank you piper for joining me on this odyssey you're a oh, legend thank you thank you very much for uh, for doing this here i enjoy seeing other people play with this yeah and big thank you to phoenix aki as well as sir boris and all of the spyro players the entire spyro speedrunning community you guys are my homies. I love you guys so much. I wouldn't be able to do what I do without all of you. And so Spyrothon is the one thing that we all have that I think brings us together as like a little event. So I think that's super cute and super special. And so hearts in the chat, GG's. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign off on that note. Love you guys. Cute chat. Absolutely. Right back at you.